Hello, RSU faculty. This is Troy Gerard, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of migrating a course from Genzibar to Blackboard. Coming up. <music> Before we begin, we want to lay the foundation and start off this planning or this migration process efficiently. The first thing we want to do is open up your Google Chrome browser on a computer and open up two tabs. The first tab being My RSU and log in on your Academics tab. And the other tab is going to be your Blackboard tab or courses.rsu.edu. Now, the next thing we want to do is open up your course page in Genzibar in the first tab and open up the new course shell in Blackboard on the second tab. Once we have that established, now we can look at what items need to be moved, what items need to be removed, uh, and we can go from there. Now that we have two tabs open, the first tab being our course, you could see that this is the master shell for the university experience course. And the other tab we have is a course shell that I want to move this into. This has our master course template. It has all of the items that we are going to need for this particular course in this template, whether it's a module, whether it's a learning activity, whether it's a syllabus page. So we want to start planning where is the stuff in Genzibar and where is it going to go in Blackboard. So our Start Here page has our course objectives, our module objectives. It has some fast track links to the Hillcat Compass, calendar events. All that kind of stuff is in different areas within Blackboard. Uh, so we want to take account for that. The next thing is maybe it's our syllabus page that has all of our content, the details of our unit learning objectives, our reading materials, our teaching method, our grading policies, that sort of thing. And this does have a place for it in Blackboard. So all of this, what I would call legal jargon or all of the, the fine print within a course, the course information lives in the Start Here module. So the Start Here module has a Start Here page. It has a welcome page that has instructor information on it, kind of where your teaching methods are. It has a course overview page that would be full of your course learning objectives, the maybe the module objectives. Maybe it has your, your, um, you know, your grade map or your course map, if you will. It has a lot of that stuff in there. The next thing is your syllabus. This would be specific policies to your course itself. Now, I know that we have a, a campus-wide syllabus uh, rubric that we follow. All of the things that are in our syllabus are in that. And we will be looking at modifying this according to what we have going on in this Start Here module. So a lot of the stuff might be duplicated that you would have in your syllabus or in the course uh, shells itself. Now, take in mind this page is a syllabus location to have a download link for your students to have a PDF. You can also copy and paste all of the content in your syllabus to this page. But the main reason we want a download link is so that we're modifying our syllabus in Word. We're creating a PDF of some sort, and we can simply put the link to that file here where we can duplicate this multiple times and it be the one file versus having to go and edit each individual course shell and the content within that shell. So I recommend putting a file there, a download link of some kind going to a PDF. The next thing we looked at is our course meetings. When is it actually going to take place? Course material, whether that's a textbook. We have our Microsoft Office 365 our technology requirements, what are the students going to need as far as technology for this particular course. We have an introductory discussion and we have policy statement, student support, student services links. All of this content is actually found in the institution resources in Genzibar. So I'll jump over here real quick. We can see institutional resources. That's our student support services links, our student services links, 
our policies and procedures, all of that stuff lives on the institutional resources. And you're going to find all that content under the policy statement, student support and student services links. Last in this module, we have a review or a syllabus quiz, if you will. And again, that is a placeholder for all of your uh, you know, your syllabus quizzes that you might want, whether what questions you want in there, it's all customizable, but it's just a placeholder for you to do that. The next thing we want to look at is the learning modules. We want to examine the learning modules within Blackboard and Genzabar. You can find the learning modules in the coursework. This is the page that most of you guys spend most of your time on. Um, and we're going to look at these modules in relation to the learning modules we have set up in Blackboard. So in this course, we have some Hillcat Compass uh, things, and then we have Unit 1s, 1 through 4. And within these modules, we have what I call the overview information. Uh, and we have a particular place that you would want to put this information in Blackboard. And the other things are the gradable items whether that's uh, telling a student what they need to be reading, is it a discussion post, is it a homework assignment, is it a participation point type of thing. So all of the content here within this unit will belong in the learning module. Now, going back to Blackboard, looking at module one, the first learning module, we have an overview page. This is where we're gonna put that overview content. And we have placeholder items for lecture material, whether you've recorded something online or you're wanting to give them some kind of PowerPoint of some kind that you use in the lecture. That's where you'd place that stuff. In the module reading, this is where you're going to be dictating to the students, hey, within this module or this unit or this chapter, these are the things that we're wanting to read. We have a placeholder discussion. Now, this is one discussion within one module. You can have multiple discussions within a module just as you have in Genzabar. So if we want to make a new one of those, all we're going to find is a purple plus sign and hit create just as we're creating something new. Uh, we have a learning activity, which is an assignment of sorts. It would be like a homework set. We also have a formative assessment, which would be like a quiz. We have an assignment with a rubric, which would be an actual gradable assignment with some kind of rubric attached. And we have an assessment, which would be a test or an exam. Now, again, all of these are placeholders that we can start retrofitting all of our content in those items. If we have more or less items in this module, we can always add or remove. Now, I wanted to take a second to talk about the items that we have in the master template and the things that we have in the start here module. The start here module is all of, like I said, the legal jargon or the course information. And that stuff is super important to have very consistent across the board, across the entire campus. So all of those pages would be the actual template that we have that is deemed for the entire school. Now going into the learning modules, if you only have one quiz and maybe an overview page, then you're wanting to remove all of the other content in those learning modules and only have that overview page and the quiz. I've dealt with a lot of faculty that only have a quiz, maybe a overview page, maybe they move something in from Cengage or McGraw-Hill platforms, and so they're wanting to move that content in. We don't have to have placeholder assignments for those particular items within those LTIs. And I have multiple videos on teaching you how to move the content. But the main thing is, is whatever you use needs to be in that module. And whatever you don't use, feel free to delete it within the learning module. Very quickly, we want to look at a module overview page or any kind of ultra document as they call it but this overview module page that we have here it does have placeholder text that we want to edit for our benefit going back to the genzabar uh, i have highlighted all of these things the overview for this particular module i can hit Control c to copy this i can then come over here find an ellipsis for this particular text box and hit edit 
Now we are able to edit this text box. We can highlight and remove any of this stuff. We can delete all of that, and we can paste all of our content here. Now this has an image. Sometimes the images will move over, sometimes it won't. Just depends on how the image was built within Genzibar versus moving it over into Blackboard. But once we have that content in there, we can hit save. Now our module one, or our unit one in this case, overview page is done. If we wanna move or remove the title, change the title, we can simply go up to the title, find the pencil icon, and we can now change the title. So if I wanna say that this is unit one overview, I can simply do that, click off of it, and now it's saved. Once the item is complete, we then want to hit view or visible to student. So we can do that by finding this arrow right next to the statement and changing the status. That makes sure that the student is now able to see this. I wanna make sure that all of my stuff in my course is viewable at first, and then go back in and hide the things that I want to change. I have an entire video on release conditions and availability of gradable items. So definitely check that out when you want to release certain things at a certain time. Now that we've moved content from Genzbar into Blackboard, we simply moved this overview page. We want to start doing that for each individual item and just build one module at a time. So if I come back to my course in Genzibar, I can see that I have an attendance or participation item. That could be something like an assignment. That could be something as an attendance item in Blackboard. We can have a homework. That could be that learning activity, a forum, so we can build out that discussion. We can have a reading that's going to go on our reading page. The syllabus quiz that, that uh, you know, lives or exists in the introduction or the start here module in Blackboard. So now we're gonna move through all of these con these items one at a time and move them over into Blackboard. Once we've completed all of our content, we've moved it over, you can see that I have a completed university experience master course. We have the modules, whether it's the start here module with the content, we have our hill cap, uh, Hillcat Compass module with our introductions to our uh, sites. We have our units. You can see that that unit one has an overview. It has a reading. It has a Hillcat Compass assignment. It has a discussion. It has multiple gradable activities. You can see that it has two discussions and a summary page if we choose to use that. And all of the content within this unit one, who are you, should reflect the same content, Unit 1, Who Are You, whether it's a chapter reading or a quiz of some kind, it should reflect the same in Blackboard. And we can see by checking all of these items, we can see that this quiz is over here, and we can just move through this, building this out. The last and final step of migrating a course is making sure that the gradebook is set up accordingly. So. In Blackboard, we want to move to the top of the screen where it says Gradebook and click this tab. We have all of our content here in an orientation. We can rearrange these items by finding these arrows over here on the right-hand side. So we can organize the Gradebook accordingly. But if we want to get to the grading weights or the Gradebook setup, we're going to find this gear icon on the right-hand side at the top of the page. We click into this, we can see that we have a grading schema, student performance settings, we have automatic zeros that we can place. This is where we can build gradable categories. You can see that I have a Hillcat compass category, a reflection paper category that I've built, and all of the other various categories that come with Blackboard. We have rubrics according to how we are using that in our course. But the main thing we are looking at is the grade overview or the overall grade setup. So we'll click this manage overall grade settings and it will come to a page where it has categories and items within this area. We can see that it equals 100 at the bottom. We can go through these categories and we can set the percentage and we can lock that percentage if we want to exempt this item, we can hit this circle with the 
cross through arrow to exempt it. We can expand or uh, contract this and see what items are in this item. If we want to remove this item, uh, academic planning and advising, if we want to take this item out of assignment, we can click this. But simply, we're going to set our grade percentages based on how they fall within our grade book. We can say that we want to base all of our calculation based on points earned versus the total points. We can show this to the student and we can say, do we want letter or percentage? Coming up in a new in a future video, I'm going to walk in detail all of these calculations, all of these settings with the new grade setting. Specifically, somebody is wanting points based in their grade book. That update is actually coming from Blackboard in July. So when that comes out, I will be able to make that video and teach you guys how to set up a grade book based on points versus graded category percentages. I hope this video is helpful. If you need any additional help with your Blackboard course, feel free to reach out and check out my other videos on YouTube. Another great resource is help.blackboard.com. Blackboard has built out a lot of helpful tips and tricks, a lot of lists so that you can walk through step by step, and great quick one minute videos to teach you the detailed information that you need about Blackboard and how to move things into Blackboard to build out your course. So be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching.